Hey folks, thanks for checking out this ND add-on update video. Um, I just wanted to take the opportunity to give you uh, a quick overview of what's happened, uh, what's new between version 1.17 and 1.19. So we've done a couple of things and I'm gonna kind of go through them probably in from the most exciting to the least exciting. Um, so the first thing we added was um, a little addition to sort of our Boolean and circular array operators. So I'm just gonna create two cubes here and quickly run a Boolean difference operation. Now, previously when we had done this, um, we would basically take the reference object and prefix it with bool, and it would be parented uh, to the target object. And obviously it was created in this collection where it originated from. So what we've done now is basically automatically create a special utils collection where all reference objects will go once they're completed uh, performing their operation. So currently this applies to booleans and the rotator objects for circular arrays. Now the reason we've done this is because you know once you start you know using uh, multiple uh, reference objects like this, so if we duplicate this a few times um, and run a few boolean operations um, you know they quite quickly add up and previously you'd you know have to either select them hide them manually unhide them when you want to see them and it was a bit tedious sort of managing the visibility of these guys um, so the fact they're in their own uh, collection now you can quite easily just sort of hide all of them um, or show all of them at once so it's a bit easier to sort of manage what's going on over there now, if you're not entirely uh, keen on the name utils for this collection and you want to name it something else, you can go down to the add-on section in your preferences, find a uh, huge menace ND, and in the preferences here, there is a utils collection name. So yeah, you can change this to whatever you want. Um, cool. All right. So the next one down is again related to Boolean. So um, let's say we wanted to reuse this reference object after we had used it as part of the Boolean operation um, and to sort of bring it back into scene as actual real geometry. Now, previously, if you wanted to do that, you'd have to shift D duplicate that, um, you know, maybe unparent it from the uh, target object, you know, move it out into the geometry collection. Um, probably come down to the viewport display, change it from wire to solid, and then you know you eventually get back to just that reference object we started with. Now, as you can see, that it's quite a process, so I wanted to make that a little bit shorter. So we've added a new operator now. So if you select a reference object, open up the ND menu, and under utils, have a look at this operator called hydrate. Um, if you select that. Um, you get a little interactive overlay here and you can sort of scroll through and select a scene to move this object into. So if I select geometry and then click, uh, you can see it does all those steps I just described, but obviously instantly for you. So now we have this, you know, back in the scene as normal geometry we can work with. So I think it's pretty cool. And I'll definitely save a bit of time, especially when you want to duplicate reference objects. Uh, next one down is another little menu that we've added. So under the main menu here, we'll see there's a new viewport uh, sub menu, and it's also been bound to the hotkey Alt V. So you can open up the standard menu using Shift 2, or if you hit Alt V, uh, you can open up this new viewport menu. Now the viewport menu is just sort of um, quick handy little shortcuts for when you're, you're working with uh, geometry and just want to see certain things, um, specifically in this case, you know, some of the more common ones. So the first one here we have is a uh, wireframe. So if you click that, it just basically enables wireframes in the 3D viewport, which is just a good way to sort of inspect the resulting geometry from all of the operations you've applied. And this is honestly no different than just coming down to your viewport overlays here and just toggling wireframe mode on and off. It's just a little bit more um, front and center now and quicker to get to if you just want to quickly hit Alt V, tap wireframes and sort of turn it off uh, on and off as you go. Uh, another one down the list there is face orientation. So with face orientation, this is a great way um, to debug uh, which way your face normals are pointing um, on your object. So if you're seeing blue, this is usually what you want to see, which means the face normals are facing outwards. Um, but if you happen to see red, um, it means they're facing inwards. So if we have a look at something such as a plane, for instance, you can see the top of the plane is blue, uh, but the bottom of the plane is red. Now, in the instance of a plane, because it's just an infinitely thin piece of geometry, that's 
pretty standard, but if we were to grab this and run, for instance, a solidify operation on that, um, because this is now a manifold mesh, you kind of want to only see blue in this case. Um, for instance, you know, there may be situations where sometimes when you run like a solidification or a screw operation or something like that, where the normals may not be uh, exactly correct. Um, you know, for instance, like let's say we, we turned on face orientation or we could see it was red. Um, the simplest way to solve that is just to go to your modifier stack and just have a look at some of the modifiers being applied. And usually the culprits are things like solidify, screw, um, yeah, I can't remember all of them, but there's a few of them that basically can affect the normals when they um, apply, you know, modifiers to your objects. Uh, so easiest way to sort of solve that is just to try and narrow down which one is causing the issue. And most of them have a little normal section on the operator, which when you open it up, there's usually an option to flip or calculate the order of the normals. And generally just toggling that on and off will basically solve that issue for you. Cool. So the next one down on the list is utils visibility. Now this one is basically just a quick shortcut to um, hiding and showing uh, basically all the utilities in the viewport. So if I just um, unhide them here properly to start with and then use the shortcut menu here and go utils visibility, you can see that all of these little reference objects here in that utils collection is basically turned on and off um, in unison. So Again, instead of coming over to the scene hierarchy and manually having to sort of hide and show them, you can just tap Alt-V, click Utils Visibility, and sort of it kind of gets out of your way. Or if you want to see them again, you can bring them back really quickly. Uh, the next one down here, um, let's just turn these off again. So the next one down here is called Clear View. And honestly, all this does is just sort of clear up the view, just gets rid of all the, uh, the visual noise, which is just a great way to sort of step back and you know inspect or admire uh, what you're doing um, in the 3D viewport. So. I'll just simply remove things like the 3D cursor, the floor, the grid, relationship lines, origins, um, and all that sort of you know visual noise you have in the 3D viewport. Cool. All right. So next one in the list um, is our new square array operator. So if I just select this object over here, open up the menu, and go down to arrays, square array, um, you'll notice basically it just arrays um, the selected object in sort of two directions. So um, by default, it's going over the X axis and the Y axis. Um, and this here, you can sort of change the count, uh, you can change the axis. So if you wanted to stack them a certain way, um, for instance, you know, up like this, um, or sort of X, Y, uh, you can sort of do that. You can change the count um, in either direction. And you can also change sort of the, the offset as well um, for each direction as well. So just a handy little operator there for a common sort of square array operation. Uh, all right, next one down is uh, kind of a cool little addition as well. So what I'm gonna do is just gonna create a new plane over here and let's just focus in on it. Um, so let's take this plane and let's run a solidification on that and just set the weighting to positive. Um, now, if we go into edit mode here and make sure we have all these uh, vertices selected and then run a vertex bevel, if we adjust this width, you can see it's basically affecting uh, this, this whole edge. So basically, um, you know, if we look at this from this vertex being down here to the vertex at the top, it's sort of, you know, creating a bevel across the, the edge that those two vertices create once it's been extruded. Um, but now sometimes that might not be exactly what you want to do um, in certain situations. So let's say we actually wanted to just run a vertex bevel on the two vertices independently of each other. Um, and that basically just comes down to the order in which this is applied. So if we grab this weld and this bevel and put them at the bottom of the stack, you'll notice how that gives you sort of a much different looking effect at the end of the day. Um, so now by default, um, ND will place uh, the the bevel vertex bevel operator at the, the top of the stack, so as in the first thing to be executed. Um, but if you're looking for that second um, behavior there, you can now, when you hover over vertex bevel, you see the tooltip says you can hold down the shift key to place the modifiers at the top of the stack or post sketch. So if we do hold down the shift key when we select vertex bevel and change the width, you can now affect those uh, vertices a little bit later in the modify stack and sort of come up with uh, some cool looking geometry that way as well. Awesome. Uh, all right, next one uh, sort of came uh, as a question from a couple of users, and this is specifically users that 
uh, don't have a mouse. So some a mouse with a scroll wheel. So if we add in a new plane, for instance, and again, let's just run a solidify uh, modifier here. Now, by default, to change the value um, of one of these options, you use the scroll wheel to scroll up to increase it and down to decrease it. Um, but we had a couple of the users reach out to me that were using tablets, um, or basically had a magic mouse or some sort of trackpad where they didn't have a scroll wheel. And so obviously they were a little bit stuck and they couldn't change these values. So just to make it easier for people that don't have a mouse with a scroll wheel, we've also allow you now to change uh, the values with the arrow keys and the WASD keys. So if you press up, um, the up arrow, you'll increase the value, down arrow will decrease, <clears throat> sorry. Um, Right arrow will increase, left arrow will decrease. Um, same with WASD, so W is increase, S is decrease, D is increase, um, sorry, S is decrease, D is increase, and A is decrease again, so increase, decrease. I've probably got that confused. Anyway, I think you get the point. Um, so that's going to hopefully make a couple of people happy, um, especially those that don't have a scroll wheel on their mouse. Uh, all right, so let's have a look. Um, next one down is just a quick little change to um, the key bindings in the add-on. So previously, if we head over to the key map here and look for the default shift to key bind, um, we'd previously only had the add-on register the key bind in the 3D view context. Um, now this is great if you're using vanilla blender, but sometimes you may have other add-ons that have actually registered shift to as a key bind, especially in object mode or mesh mode. Um, I can't remember the name of the add-on now, but there's one that manages the um, collection visibility and they sort of bind it to like shift one to nine. Um, so that was sort of uh, creating a bit of a conflict for some people not realizing they, you know, when they hit shift to the ND menu wasn't appearing. So um, we'll see that still the, can be the case, you know, for instance, I have, you know, one thing in here, select mode, still bound to shift two. But what we've done is just to ensure it becomes less of a problem is we register the shift to key bind in the 3D view, mesh view and object mode. Um, so it'd be less likely for you to sort of install the add on and not be able to bring up the menu using shift two. Obviously, if it still doesn't come up for you, just go to your key binds and just make sure you don't have something else sitting there using shift two. Um, that has a higher precedence um, than the key bind for ND. Cool, hopefully that makes sense. Uh, last one here is again, something to do with key binds. So I've had a few people reach out and ask like, oh, can we change uh, the key bind from shift two to something else? And the common one that came up is using the Q key. Um, so again, if we go to shift two over here um, and let's go to object mode, for instance, I'm gonna click on shift two and then just hit the Q key. Um, that's an easy way to just rebind that to a different key. So I'm hitting Q now to bring this up instead of Shift 2. Um, the only problem with that is though, because the Q key is usually what brings up your quick favorites in Blender. So if you, for instance, go to any operator in Blender, sort of right click and go add to quick favorites, um, you'd normally press Q to bring that up. But obviously if you rebind a Q to the ND menu, um, you lose your quick favorites. So in order to sort of help alleviate that problem, um, under the add-on preferences, uh, we've enabled, sorry, we've op optionally give you the option to, sorry, I can't even speak, it's been a long day. <laughs> um, you can enable quick favorites um, by checking this on. So if you do that and hit the Q key again, you can see you get the, the full menu, plus you get this little quick favorites addition down the bottom, which allows you to quickly get back to your quick favorites if you, for instance, want to use quick favorites and ND bound uh, to the Q menu. Cool, anyway, that was quick and uh, hopefully uh, interesting. So I'll probably do these again in the future, probably once every couple of versions just so we can sort of go through what's changed. And I think people maybe enjoy this a little bit more than sometimes reading a change log or, or the written documentation. Anyway, have fun and I look forward to hearing any feedback or any suggestions or any feature requests you might have. Um, if you haven't already, um, definitely check out um, some of the other videos on our YouTube channel. It's still early days, so I'm sort of kind of putting them out when I can. Um, but if you even just want to chat about ND or just need some support or some guidance, um, definitely hop onto our Discord server as well. And I've added a link down into the description as well.